Ryan's Privateer FX. Coming at you on a Wednesday here, July 24th. We got French and German PMI today. That'll be kind of interesting. Uh, otherwise, we're kind of in the wait and see mode for ECB, which obviously comes in tomorrow. Let's have a look at these charts uh, in the news cycle and see what is going on. Euro yen on the top of our list here. Interesting day yesterday, 120, 77, 76. We had about 700 euros. Looked for sure like it was protecting a knockout because after the four o'clock expiry went, um, we chopped through all of that stuff and finally made a break here. Uh, although limited, uh, a break nonetheless in Euro Yen. Low's been uh, 52, though we're sitting here at the low right now. The problem here is there's almost a unanimity of negative expectations for this uh, for these PMIs. So if these PMIs beat, let's say Germany comes in at 46 or 47, they're expected 45. Uh, let's say France comes in at 52. Um, manufacturing is supposed to be 51.6. Service is supposed to be 52.7. If these guys beat, um, the short-term market is short euro dollar and short euro yen, perhaps short euro sterling, um, perhaps short euro Swiss. Uh, the whole euro complex has, has come off pretty handily here heading into ECB uh, and we shall see uh, we shall see just how bearish and how dovish the ECB is so today we're just going to do hit and run on the PMIs right so if PMIs beat uh, we will just zip in pay the offers grab some cash uh, in Euro Yen and if PMIs miss wildly um, we probably won't actually do anything if they miss left hand side this is all getting a little crowded and a little extended uh, doesn't make a ton of sense to us technically it makes perfect sense uh, but on the story side doesn't make tons of sense so it's basically just hit and run today so if you're, if you're short euro yen makes sense your stops above 70 six or your stops probably above 80 uh maybe kill at 83 hopefully you get a you get a soft one uh if you're square going into this like we are we'll be tactically looking to pick off offers on uh on the beat and if it doesn't beat we're just going to sit um sit for a little bit and and, and digest this Let's take a look at dollar cad interesting price action yesterday we went through that 45 level uh, traded up to 64 and then we were sort of 64 down to 24 back to 46 so we didn't get the follow through that we really were hoping for here a little bit of a tail there um, again just kind of a summer market fizzle we talked about it yesterday on Twitter. Uh, during these times when the market has no energy and nobody is playing, uh, you want to marry nothing. So, you know, we just grabbed a little bit of cash in dollar cad yesterday. After the second time, after the second pullback, uh, we did not rebuy and just squared it um, because. There's just such a limited opportunity set to make money here. Just treading water is is almost okay because uh, you just there's no big money to make in these kind of markets. So we're square again, dollar cad. It looks like we're back towards the range. We're teetering right on this on this pivot, this bull bear pivot, one thirty one forty five. Not a whole lot to do here. I mean, um, looks like we're just going to float around. Let's go to dollars are. Uh, we like this back higher. We're waiting for uh, 1404 to get involved. 
um, but it looks like we're doing a little bit of a rounding bottom here very similar to the dollar CAD chart um, when we were probing that 13020 area we just can't seem to make much headway down through 1380 things get more interesting through 97 uh, and then through 04 obviously your 200 day is at 18 um, we do like this uh, rand higher but the story needs to story needs to come into play we would like to see some risk off we would like to see 10 year bonds in the US have a higher yield so we're not going to run after and chase this but we do have a bias for this to go a little bit higher let's look at Aussies come off quite pretty hard um, from these 70 80 levels right back in the middle of the range uh, we do not suggest chasing this. We have news about the U.S. and China, which is going to move this. Uh, and then we have local domestic news, which is pretty unanimously negative in Australia, which would be pushing this down. But as you can see down here, um, ATR is, is 42, 42 points. It doesn't... It's probably going to run out of steam already. The high has been 08, so you're kind of looking for like a a 60 low on the on the stretch as far as your average true range is concerned and your standard deviations. The the expected ranges are so small um, with vol where it is. There's no point in chasing this. Euro sterling. We're going to go out on a limb and say. Um, even though it, we didn't get through 50 yesterday, this is worth a try again, just on a purely technical side and just based on the fact that people are unanimously short sterling. Uh, whether Boris Johnson is good or bad doesn't really matter what you think. Uh, the market's a little bit crowded on this trade and, and, and really nothing's changed. The UK is going to probably get through this Brexit period one way or the other. Um, a lot of people are saying it's going to be a hard Brexit. I'm just not sure that's going to happen. I think um, all of this bluster and all of this, uh, you know, hot air that comes out of Boris, you know, in the end, I, I just get the feeling he's just going to pull this off and there's going to be either like this this super soft Brexit type thing or there'll be like a trade negotiated Brexit um, but just purely on the technicals it looks like this right shoulder is now really coming into play and it's just worth taking a hack at it down through that 50 area in Euro Sterling even though Euro Sterling is a bit of a bitch to trade uh, we do like this lower uh, that said we're not going to fade it we're going to be very disciplined with this and just trade it as a break trade. Dollar Swiss has turned a little bit. Euro Swiss off its knees a tiny, tiny bit. Euro Swiss went down to 70 yesterday. This will be interesting when we get to this trend line in, in Dollar Swiss. 98.84. First time there, there'll be a resistance, but a break through that may free things up a bit. Let's take a look at this Euro Swiss. Very ominous, very, very ominous when Euroswiss does this. Uh, I said it on Friday, I said it yesterday, I'm going to say it again today. Uh, our experience, uh, which is over 30 years in this market, when Euroswiss does this mysterious stuff um, and the big boys are smashing it, usually there's some global macro political event that's on the horizon um, I don't know if that event was you know there was some funny military action uh, in Korea between Russia China Korea and Japan yesterday there was uh, obviously some funny business in the Straits of Hormuz with the tanker uh, over the weekend I'm not sure if that that was it but keep an eye on it I, I I'm not long I'm not short I'm just watching it as a barometer uh, it does worry me I'll be less worried when this gets back above 110.50 
Um, but as we're sitting here on our knees, it's a warning. It's a warning siren, Euro Swiss. So just just be careful out there um, with this thing. Not really that much else to say. Like I said, we're going to be very, very tactical with these PMIs today. Um, should be interesting. You do have RBA Governor Lowe speaking super late, so tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., but I guess it, it is on tonight's calendar. Um, he is speaking super late tonight, so those of you who have Aussie on, be careful with that. We've got U.S. Manufacturing uh, and Services PMI out also today with new home sales. We're just going to be tactical today. We're just going to be grabbing pips as we see them uh, with the main emphasis to keep our powder dry going into ECB tomorrow. Our early bias is we want to get long euros on a less dovish ECB. Anyway, I've said enough now. Good luck out there, people. Scratch some dough out there, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.